So that's how we go about um, specifying the cut levels. Uh, well, there was another question about feed rates. Uh, can you talk about uh, how plunge feed rates and cut feed rates work? Certainly. So uh, each operation, you have different feed rate controls. You have feed rate controls for uh, plunge, approach, engage, cut, retract, and departure. So let's take a look at one of these um, tool paths in here. So let's go to one of these levels. So uh, as you can see from the tool path that's being displayed, so the plunge motion is from your clearance plane down to um, you know, just short of the approach, you can see the, the tool pad, the high, you know, the display of the tool pad that uh, appears yellow in color, that's your plunge motion feed rate. So whatever you specify in your cut parameters for the plunge motion feed rates will apply to that. And then you have your engage uh, approach and the engage feed rates being applied in here. So since we are using a, a facing, uh, a core cut pattern, the cutter enters in, uh, it's engaging in from the outside. So it goes from the plunge, to approach, to engage, and then you have your cut feed rate. And then when it retracts, it applies a retract and the departure feed rates. And then if you have set it to transfer using use rapid, it'll transfer out at a rapid feed rate that you've defined on the machine, which could be a G0, uh, the rapid feed is defined in the machine. Or if you set it to a set value, it'll output the set value for those feed rates. So these feed rate values can be defined in the operation, or you could be specifying these feeds and speeds in the tool and you can save those feeds and speeds in a tool and then load those feeds and speeds into the operation from the tool automatically. Now if you take a look at a operation like a parallel finishing operation, again you have the options to specify your approach, engage, uh, feeds and speeds and the entry and exit parameters for each of these can be set right in here. Uh, I can specify the length, angle, the same thing can be set for the length and angle, then generate it. So that would apply your plunge, your approach, engage, cut feed, the same goes with retract, departure, and then transfer if you program it in multiple levels. So likewise we have control for the horizontal finishing as well. You could specify entry and exit for the approach, engage, retract and departure motion and set those corresponding feed rates in the feeds and speeds tab. So you have your plunge, approach, engage, cut, retract, departure and the transfer feed. I hope that answers the question. So uh, feed rate reduction factors uh, can be specified um, under the feeds and speeds tab. They can also be set in the tool definition as well. In the feeds and speeds tab, we have feed rate reduction factors for plunge between levels. So plunge between levels is when we have multiple Z levels. So for example, in this case, you're, uh, you have uh, multiple levels and when the cutter is, uh, you know, you're cutting down, plunging down from one level to the next level, you can specify a feed rate reduction factor. So as it goes from, you know, from the first level to the next level, you can specify to use a percentage of the cut feed rate for plunging between levels. So for example, if the cut feed rate in this particular program toolpath is 40 inches per minute, and I can set the plunge between levels to 20%, It'll apply 20% of the cut feed rate, so which would be eight inches per minute as it goes from the first level to the second level as it goes down in the z-axis. That would be the plunge between levels reduction factor for feed rate. And we also have a feed rate reduction factor for first XY pass. The first XY pass is when the stool is taking the cutter, is taking the complete width of the cutter on the first pass. So when we program a tool path, the first pass, which typically if you're programming in a cavity where you have a pocket, so the first pass will be uh, taking the full width of the cutter, so you can reduce the feed rate for the first XY pass by specifying a percent 
of the total cut feed rate. So that can be specified again in the feeds and speeds tab. For the first XY pass, you can reduce it down. Let's say if I put in 25% of the cut feed rate, the first XY pass would be 25% of 40, which would be 10 inches per minute. Now the bottom Z level feed rate reduction factors applies primarily to profiling operation in two axes. So when you're uh, profiling a part in multiple levels. So for example, if I add a two axis uh, profiling toolpath by picking this geometry in here and in the cutting parameters, I'll choose to cut on the outside. We'll pick the cut depth and we'll step it in hundred thousands per level. And when we specify a feed rate reduction of bottom Z level, I put in 25% generate a toolpath. So the, the final cut level will be at 25% of your cut feed rate. So that's what the bottom Z level feed rate reduction factor be. So you have four levels. The final level would be at the reduced feed rate that you specify under feeds and speeds. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, we're getting close to the end, but there was a couple of questions on the G-Code editor. Uh, so it seems like a lot of people are unfamiliar with that. If you can show where you can access it and how you can actually load a G-Code program. Absolutely, I'll certainly do that. So um, 